Hello and welcome to Prickly, a podcast from KJZZ's Politics Desk. I'm Wayne Shutsky. While most of the focus in Arizona recently has been on last week's presidential preference election, there's another election going on that could have wide-ranging effects on many residents' everyday lives, from their household budgets to the air they breathe. I'm talking about the April 2nd election for the boards and other bodies that govern the Salt River Project. Just because the elections fall under the radar doesn't mean they're not important. Eligible SRP voters are responsible for electing dozens of positions, including board members for SRP's association and district. To find out more about what those entities control, I spoke with SRP executives John Felty and Michael O'Connor. Felty said the SRP Association, formerly known as the Salt River Valley Water Users Association, dates back to 1903, when a group of landowners pledged their land as collateral to obtain a loan to build Roosevelt Dam and other dams along the Salt River. It still provides around 1 million acre feet of water to a service area covering 240,000 acres in the Phoenix metro. And then there's the district. The district is a subdivision of the state of Arizona that was formed and overlaid on top of the association, and that is commonly probably thought of as the power company. SRP provides water and power services to more than 2 million people in Arizona. For the current election, eligible voters will have the chance to cast ballots for the boards and councils for SRP's association and district. All of those different positions can get a little confusing, so I asked Felty and O'Connor to break them down for me. They said the boards are responsible for making big decisions, like creating policies, setting rates, and hiring the organization's executives. But to understand the role of the councils, O'Connor said you have to know a little bit more about SRP's history, dating all the way back to when those landowners decided to put up their land to build Roosevelt Dam. The board's the primary electoral body that reviews policy, rate-making, decisions, etc. When it was originally formed, you know, that's what the board was there for, to make those decisions. But the council was there because, remember, all this land was pledged for collateral. And the council's primary function initially was to make sure the board didn't overburden and get more debt because the council Mm -hmm. was supposed to act on behalf of all those landowners to make sure things were working. So what does that all mean for consumers and why should SRP voters care about the election? I pose that question to Sandy Barr, the director of Sierra Club's Grand Canyon chapter. It's her job to advocate for the organization's climate policies in Arizona, so she's following the election closely. I think people who are eligible to vote in the SRP election should really vote, and everyone should care about these elections because the people that are on these boards and councils control a lot of what happens relative to electricity and also water. And, you know, we are particularly concerned with the direction the SRP board has been going with uh, really hanging on to too much fossil fuel generation. And so if people are concerned about transitioning to clean energy and about what their rates will be, uh, then uh, then they should really care about these elections. I think there's a lot of interest among everyday people when it comes to the rates they're paying for electricity and how our utilities are responding to climate change. So participation in SRP's elections must be pretty high, right? Barr said that's not necessarily true because determining who is eligible to vote in the SRP elections is not exactly a straightforward proposition. And as someone who, who who very involved and pays attention to these elections, what does voter engagement typically look like in these elections in terms of eligible voters versus who's actually participating? Well, a lot of people um, don't know they can participate in the election because you could be uh, an, uh, an APS ratepayer and actually be eligible mm. depending on where you live. And so there are some people. And then there are a whole lot of other people who pay SRP uh, money every month through their electric bills who aren't eligible. You you can't vote unless you own property. Again, O'Connor says voting eligibility dates back to SRP's early days. Those are the people who could originally vote in the association elections. And then because they transferred all those assets and property to the district, It's the same people generally on an acreage system in terms of we're able to vote in the district system as well. 
And just in case you don't know whether your home sits on property that was part of SRP's formation over 100 years ago, SRP maintains a page on its website with voting eligibility maps and criteria. You can also call SRP at 602-236-3048 to find out if you're eligible. SRP's website also includes information about all of the candidates who are running for the boards and councils. The reason I'm not telling you more about them is because there are 12 races and dozens of candidates running for open positions. But please visit SRP's website and find out more about those folks for yourself. Barr with the Sierra Club criticized SRP's election processes and eligibility requirements, saying they make it too difficult for stakeholders to participate in SRP's governance and shut out people who should have a voice. There should be no requirement for owning property. It's very discriminatory. So that's the first hurdle. Second of all, you have to own property within a certain area, you know, basically the original area that was put up for um, uh, to help build Roosevelt Dam. And uh, so, you know, you if you live, for example, in Fountain Hills and you're an SRP uh, rate payer, you can't vote in the election because you're not within that map area. Uh, you have to request a ballot. Uh, they don't automatically send you a ballot if you're an eligible voter. I mean, to me, with all those restrictions on eligibility, they ought to automatically send anyone who's eligible a ballot so they understand. O'Connor said voters can sign up to receive an early ballot, and there's also an option to opt in to a permanent early voting list. The deadline to request an early ballot for this election passed on March 22nd. But you can still vote in person at SRP's voting center in Tempe between now and Election Day. That center is located at 1500 North Mill Avenue and is open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. The center will be open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Election Day on April 2nd. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Prickly Podcast from KJZZ's Politics Desk. Tune in to 91.5 to hear our coverage of this and other elections happening in Arizona this year. Or log on to KJZZ.org. Please subscribe to the Prickly Podcast wherever you get your podcasts.